Welcome back, everybody, to The Practical Woodsman. I'm Rut, the creator and host of The Practical Woodsman. That's right. It's my genius which has brought this all into existence. Stick around with me. We're going to be talking about spices and non-perishables, and I'll show you what I keep in stock. Uh, some of these things are, golly gee, five, six years old. But, you know, I could take them out right now, cook them up out in the woods, and they would be just fine. So let's do the uh, musical introduction first, and we'll be right back. So we're at the end of the year and with the holidays coming up and everything, it's throwing everything out of balance. I was also sick for two solid weeks, so that's thrown me off my schedule. But I thought, what is something that I can share with folks that people might find interesting and might find useful? We're talking about preparedness, of course, but uh, we're talking about anything you can grab, keep in stock, and it will just last for years and years and years. Spices fall into that category, of course. And the reason why I like spices so much is because they last forever. And if you got some rice or pasta, which also lasts forever, then you can do all kinds of combinations with spices and uh, other ingredients that you can pick up here and there. And you've got a lot of flexibility with what you can do with these things. So I, uh, I like to experiment when I get out into the back country. I don't always like to take a mountain house meal or, you know, prepackaged meal, although I got them. I've got things like these tuna packets, which, uh, what, what, what the expiration date on this is. <laughs> so, uh, two years ago, this tuna is two years past its, its, uh, printed expiration date, but I'll tell you what, I could open this up right now and it would taste just fine. In fact, let's do it. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. If this tastes terrible, then <laughs> I'll be honest about that. But let's uh, open it up. This is a, a package of buffalo flavored tuna in aluminum packaging that is two years past its expiration date. Let's see how it tastes. It's still plenty moist. Can, I got some cameras set up, but let's see. It looks very plenty moist. Yeah, it tastes just fine. It tastes as fresh as if we bought it yesterday. So this is the type of thing I'm saying that um, you can buy it and then if it doesn't make it into your pack for like a certain outing or for a certain trip, then you can just pack it away and save it for another trip or save it for an emergency. So I've got several packaged things like that. I've got a bumblebee, lemon, sesame, and ginger seasoned tuna. What's the expiration date on that? Almost three and a half years past its printed expiration date. Let's try that. Let me give you a look at that. It's nice and moist. It's really nice and moist. All right, let's get a... I just, I just had lunch, so I'm not that hungry, but I'm just doing this just to show you that things can often last a lot longer past their printed expiration date. Oh, it's delicious. Now, if I drop over dead during this recording, you be sure to call 911 for me. But no, it tastes great. Nothing wrong with that at all. So there's one... Uh, package of tuna that's two years past its printed expiration date and another one that's three and a half years past its expiration date. These things that are uh, packaged really well in that aluminum type packaging can last a long, long time. So we're just going to talk about, we're just going to kind of go through some of the stuff I've got in these bins here and um, I'll tell you why they sit up there. I buy things that I say that'll last a long time 
that would be useful in lots of different situations end of the world type of situation it'd be useful and then i pack them here in my bins and i just put them up on the shelf then when i have a planned outing into the woods i can dig through there and grab what i want or if the uh, society collapses tomorrow i've got those things i can dig through them electricity goes out grid goes down you know all, all that sort of thing now you notice i've got a bunch of bread bags here what do you reckon these bread bags are for <clears throat> i saved these bread bags because they will waterproof your boots and what you do is you put your sock on and then you put your foot in one of these bread bags with the sock and then your foot goes in your boot and um, that, these come in real handy. Old timers know about this. Um, it is very, very effective. And my favorite time to be out in the woods is this time of year in the winter time, and run into all sorts of conditions. You know, rain, snow, sometimes really surprising amounts of snow. A couple of years ago, I went out to do this backpacking trip in uh, northern, northeastern Pennsylvania. No snow in the forecast at all. But once I got up into those mountains, I'm telling you. It come up to my shin, up to almost up to my knee, that snow. And no matter how well Gore-Tex works, and no matter how good your boots are, if snow sits on top of your boot when you're just walking through snow, and then you it piles up on top of your boot, the heat from your foot is warming your boot, that snow will start to melt, and then it will seep in. That's kind of Gore-Tex's... Achilles heel if water just splashes on it or if you just walk through a uh, you know a small creek or something like that Gore-Tex handles that real well but if snow or water is just sitting on the membrane it will seep down into your boot so a bread bag a couple of bread bags with your Gore-Tex boots is a nice solution to keeping your feet dry now your feet will sweat in these but that's far superior in my opinion having some sweaty feet than having your feet soaked by cold snow or cold rain or cold water from the outside in. So whenever I finish a loaf of bread, I just try to make sure that I've got plenty of these bread bags stored away so that I can just grab one anytime I want it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some things out of these bins and then we'll talk about them one by one. Really my original idea for the show <clears throat> had to do with spices. And maybe I'll do a show at some other point where we just focus uh, strictly on spices. But uh, for now, let me just get some things out of here and we'll talk about these things. Now, before we started uh, taste testing the expired tuna, the thing I was starting to say was that I'm not opposed to taking like these mountain house freeze-dried meals with me on, into the back country. I'm not opposed to having them in stock. This is beef, beef stroganoff noodles. But uh, very rarely am I satisfied with the way they taste just on their own. When I get out into the back country, I like things that with flavor that really pops. And so with that in mind, I always carry my own spices. And I'll doctor up these, these mountain house meals and make them really next level, you know, when I'm out in the back country, when I take these. But, you know, your spices come in handy for, uh, like I said, everything. If you've got some dried goods, which I'm about to show you here, um, then spices will make those really plain, bland, dry goods uh, pop and make them really uh, flavorable. So, medicines, I always try to keep plenty of medicines in these things. I've got aspirin, I've got naproxen here, my aspirin. I've got uh, you know, heart burn pills here. But uh, what I do is I buy, I try to buy them in bulk. And then I keep, what I'll do is I'll separate them out. And I've got containers that I carry, for example, in my bug out bag, in my backpacking bag, in my truck. I'll separate them out and I'll keep a little medicine kit in various places. But then the original bottles where I bought them in bulk, then I'll just store in some of these bins here. And then as I run them out in those other containers and those other places, then I just come back and I refill as needed. 
pre in the previous episode of the podcast, I talked about the, the medicines that I prefer. And so if you want to know why I prefer those medicines and all that, be sure to watch the this latest episode of the Practical Woodsman podcast to know. But uh, I carry aspirin, ibuprofen, Excedrin, and Aleve. And I've started carrying these little capsules of uh, Pepto-Bismol. They come in a pink capsule. I've started carrying those too. Um, old-time candies. I like these old-timey candies. Clay's hard candies. And uh, I just recently moved a bunch out of this packaging and put them in a couple of these jars here. Plastic jars. And then as I need them, I just get five or six of them out there. Put them in a little bag, take them with me on backpacking. Road trips. That's another thing that all this stuff is good for. It's just road trips. I never go on a road trip without grabbing a pack that has a lot of emergency items in it and those sorts of things. And so I look at road trips exactly like I look at, uh, for example, uh, an excursion out into the woods or <laughs> an into the world event. That's the way I treat it. And I just throw these sorts of things into my bag and, and then I have them with me when I'm out on the road. I'll tell you what, I went out to a buddy's house the other day to uh, pick up some firewood. He had some firewood for me that I went out to pick up. And uh, I did not take a bag of gear. And I didn't even take uh, any water. I didn't take anything. And I got about halfway to his place. And uh, I said to myself, that's the last time that's going to happen. Because I was really thirsty. And this drive was not between any towns. It was all backcountry. For me to drive from my house to his house and so there was just nothing there were no gas stations or anything like that you know we live in that type of world where if you're driving down the road and you get thirsty you say to yourself well i don't need to be carrying anything because i can just pull over to any gas station run in grab a bottle of pop and and i'm set well that ain't always true so my approach to these things is to be as self-sufficient as i can be it's nice if there's a gas station there, but if I don't have to pull over to a gas station just because I'm thirsty, it's nice. It's nice to have some water already with me, or at the very least, some easy way of scooping up some water and having it treated and drinking it. That's where this thing comes in. This is a... Uh, oh, you've seen the Grail, the Grail Geo Presses. This is a cheaper cousin of a Grail Geo Press. And uh, Amazon sent this to me to test out. Well, I tell you, it's exactly the same thing as a as a Grail GeoPress. It's just a different brand, probably a cheap Chinese knockoff brand. But it does the same thing, works exactly the same way. And unfortunately, I can't really recommend it because if I didn't get it for free, I wouldn't have bought this because it costs the same as a Grail GeoPress. And while it's not made cheap, I mean, this is a beast. It's made with really nice, solid materials. Uh, I just don't see it being as high quality as one of those Grail Geo Presses. But if you're interested in looking these things up, the brand of this is uh, Pure Nova. Pure Nova. And it works exactly the same way as a, as a Grail Geo Press. But back to my story of driving in the backcountry between my house and my friend's house and not having anywhere to pull over and get a bottle of pop or anything. It would have been awfully nice for me to have this in my truck. And I pass a lake, just pull over, scoop up some lake water, and instantly have a bottle of pure, pure water to drink. So I've resolved to keep something like this in different strategic locations like in my truck. So that, again, I'm never, never without. Now, what I'm talking about here is for simplicity's sake. Of course, I could pull the truck over and I could go looking for a clean stream of water and find perfectly clean drinking water out in the forest without any need to uh, treat it or do anything to it. But that don't take, typically, two minutes. It's not something you can just pull the truck over and two minutes later you got your drinking water. Now, that's something that you've got to kind of search out. It takes time to search out. You have to do some walking and bushwhacking, and you just it's just not always convenient to do that. So that's why I say that it's nice to have something like this around. Here's another one of those mountain house meals. This is one that I've transferred to its own bag. How old do you reckon that is? 
I'd say this thing is probably three years old, and I'm not going to do it right now like I did it with the tuna, but I guarantee I could just open that up, pour that into my mug, pour some hot water on, water on there, and that would be perfectly safe and fine to eat and would taste just like, just like it does. Now, the secret to doing that, if you're going to transfer, for example, from this into this, you want to make sure you seal that bag good, and then you want to make sure that you include that moisture absorber in there and it'll stay for a long long time it'll keep for a long long time and so i just hang on to these things that was something that i transferred into that bag a couple years ago with the intention of uh taking it with me on a excursion deep ex week-long excursion into the back country and uh by by the time i left i had come up with some other things that i wanted to do instead so this didn't make the cut and so it, I just throw it into one of these bins, and there it sits until I'm ready to use it at another time. Now you might see here that I've got two of these spice kits. Two of these, uh, what brand is this? I think it's G, I can't remember the name. And they, of course they don't, put, they don't put it anywhere on here, which is ridiculous. GSM, I think, is the, name, is the brand name of these things. The one here on, in my left hand, that is called a spice rocket. And the one in my right hand is called spice missile. You can see the size difference of those things. While this seems like it would be a great item to carry in your backpack, I, I don't think it really is because it doesn't hold enough. Do you see? Each chamber is divided in two which means that the spices that the amount of spice that it's able to hold is awfully small. And so I'm just not sure that the spice missile, although I've used it, I've taken it into the back country with me, I'm just not convinced that it's worth the trouble for the tiny itsy bitsy a little bit of amount of spice that you're able to carry in this. If you're doing any type of serious cooking, uh, that's just not going to cut it. Let's say that you're cooking up a stew or something in a pot. I, I'm not sure that that amount of spice is worthwhile at all. So if you're going to carry something like that, you might as well bite the bullet and carry the larger spice rocket because uh, it also has that same design. Each chamber is divided into two, and so it can hold a, a much greater amount of spice. Sometimes I use these. Most of the time I don't. What I do instead for my spices is I buy these little three, I think they're three ounce. No, no, I take it back. I think they're one ounce. One ounce little containers, plastic containers off of uh, Amazon. And then I put my own spices in there. You can see that even compared to the spice rocket that this is cumin, by the way, but that amount of cumin is a lot greater than any one of these chambers can hold. And this is Tabasco. So the nice thing about using these little, I think they're one ounce, little containers, plastic containers, is that they'll hold both liquids and powders. And, uh, and I like that a lot. So I prefer doing these instead of using these most of the time. And I'll show you how you carry these. A very simple way to carry uh, for carrying your spices. So as most of you know, I always carry a bandana with me or a kerchief. And so you can take your, your, your kerchief, you can lay that out like this. Got a salt and pepper shaker here. So take my spices. I'm just throwing some things in here. <laughs> what else can I put in there? Uh, let's put our oil. All right, so we got some olive oil, le leftover olive oil. And then what you do with your kerchief is you fold that up like that, fold this like this, and then you can just roll that. And then that's your spice kit right there. It's very, very simple. So then you can put that inside your cook pot or Put that in a pocket in your backpack, whatever you want to do. And then get yourself, don't forget, go get yourself another bandana or a kerchief to replace in your back pocket. 
But these kerchiefs, I just love them. They, they're so useful for so many things that uh, I, I feel pretty naked nowadays when I'm not carrying one. When you want to collect something, something around camp, it could be kindling. Let's say you want to collect tinder, you want to collect kindling. Pull your kerchief out of your back pocket, lay it down on the ground, put your kindling or your tinder down there, and you just pick it up by each corner, and there you are. You can carry that back to camp and do what you want to do. Uh, you've seen hobos, the hobo stick, right? They'll put their belongings in their kerchief and then tie that up around a stick and then sling that over their shoulder and walk with it like that. Uh, they, they just so come in handy for so many things. And like I said, you want to use, if you're going to get yourself kerchiefs and start using them, you want them to be of a natural material, specifically cotton. The reason is because if you're using that to reach into the fire or something like that to get a hot pot out of the fire you don't want it melting you don't want it melting around the fire so cotton burns it don't melt like the synthetics do you know nylon polyester and so be sure before you buy a kerchief to check out the materials in it the materials that it's made out of before you buy it because I've started to buy a kerchief from time to time and it turns out when I look at the uh, the materials it's made out of, I see that it's polyester or something. You can't always tell just by touching it. <clears throat> Last thing about this kerchief. What is the best way I have found to fold a kerchief for carrying in your back pocket? The best way I've found, and I, I started doing this because I started carrying a kerchief back during the pandemic because I did not buy masks. I just used my kerchief as my mask. I would just tie it around myself like a bank robber or something like that. So to make it as easy as possible to just pull that thing out of my pocket and tie it around my face, I started folding it in the shape of a Dorito, the Dorito fold, let's call it. And so you wanna go like this, where you make a triangle out of it and just keep folding it as a triangle. See right there, I could tie that around my face as a mask. Now that's not just good during pandemics. It's good if you're changing the brakes on the car. It's good if you're working around a campfire and you don't want all the smoke getting into your lungs. You know, when it, you're, you're working on it or you're moving fuel around on top of the fire and you know how it smokes up real big, you can just pull your bandana out and get that done without breathing in all that smoke. But it, then when you're folding it back into your back pocket, you just continue folding it in that Dorito triangle style. And there you go. That's the way it goes in my back pocket. That's the way I keep it. That's the way I do it. You can do it however you'd like, but that's just some, just thought I'd share that with you. All right, let's take a look at some of these dry goods here. Right here, I've got sunflower seeds with shell. I really like these when I'm out in the woods uh, they're nice to, you know, like the baseball players do when you're sitting around talking or whatever. It's nice to chew on these sunflower seeds, spit the shells out. What you do is you get a handful of them, you put them in your jaw, kind of like chewing tobacco. And then you pull one into your, you pull one over with your tongue, crack that open with your teeth, get the seed out, swallow it, and then just spit the shell out. But it's also nice when you're hiking down the trail. These things uh, are high in salt. So, you know, when you're working hard out there in the back country, you're sweating out all your salts. So these things are nice to, to chew on and uh, they give you energy, replace the salts that you're losing. But it also, it's fun. It's just a lot of fun. It's kind of like the reason that the baseball players do it. They do it because they're standing around a lot of time, just anxiously watching the game. And so uh, chewing sunflower seeds is a way to kind of give your, give your brain something to do while you're standing around. Here's some more, I'm sure, expired tuna. Oh, these are some new new ones. The printed expiration on these aren't until 2026. Uh, those are, <laughs> I don't remember buying those. Well, there you go. Of course, along with spices, you should always carry bouillon cubes. With bouillon cubes, some water, and then some whatever you got. You can make some wonderful stews. And I'll tell you another thing, I did this out a couple years ago. I carry this Kentucky Colonel flour. It's spelled K 
K-E-R-N-E-L, Kentucky Kernel Flour. And this is a spiced flour. Look for it in your grocery store. See if you can find it. It's my favorite flour. Somebody showed this to me years ago. He uh, was a good buddy of mine, a little bit older than me, and uh, sort of the guy who taught me bass fishing. So this wasn't just a few years ago. This was 30 years ago. <clears throat> Not only did he teach me bass, fish, bass fishing, freshwater bass, but he also introduced me to this Kentucky Colonel flour. And I always keep Kentucky Colonel flour around. On this one occasion, we were fishing real early in the morning and we caught some monster bass. He said, all right, well, let's take this back to my place and we will fillet this, fillet these fish, and then we'll fry them up in that Kentucky Kentucky kernel flour and we'll have them for breakfast boys. I'm telling you it was one of the best breakfasts I think I've ever had and uh, That's the only way I prepare my fish now I'll fillet my fish batter them up in this Kentucky kernel flour and fry those fish up and my goodness That is some good eating now there's a lot of other things you can do with this Kentucky kernel flour uh, around here fried green maters, you know fried green tomatoes are an important part of life and uh the way I make fried green maters is I fry them up in this Kentucky kernel flour. But another thing I do, and you should be seeing video of it right now, is that when I make my practical woodsman stew out in the woods, which <clears throat> is just boiling cubes, vegetables, tater, onion, whatever meat you got. And so, uh, you know, it can take on a lot of different forms. But what I'll do to thicken that soup up and turn it from a soup into a stew is I'll put a couple tablespoons of this Kentucky kernel flour in my soup and let that cook on my campfire and it thickens it up adds calories to the whole thing adds flavor uh, it's a nice thing so you should be seeing some video of me having done that out in the winter time when it was frigid cold but my goodness it was nice to get that that stew in me and all that it involved was bouillon, Kentucky kernel flour, like I said, tater, onion, some other vegetables, and I can't remember what meat I had with me. I think I had some bacon. I threw some bacon in there. And that made this just fantastic stew. So look, see if you can't find that Kentucky kernel flour. I'll try to flash some pictures up here of the box. It's not a big, it doesn't come in a huge container. But try that. Try that with your... Uh, Anything you like to fry up, try it with your stews, try it with your fish, try it with your chicken, and uh, I think you'll thank me. Here I've got some uh, powdered mashed taters. I buy these things, put them in these snack packs here. I, I kid you not, I think these right here are six or seven years old. I guarantee they're as good as the day I put them in this bag. So I, those would make some delicious mashed taters they last forever I, I really like these things that just don't expire they just last forever and ever and ever now eventually you do have to change them out but you know uh, six years six seven years that ain't, that ain't bad for example if i were going to go out on an excursion this weekend for example i was going to go out for a week i wouldn't go to the grocery store and buy new mashed taters what i would do is i would just use out of this and then later I would I would go to the grocery store and I would replace what I used. And so that way, you know, you're kind of cycling things in and out. What I got here, licorice candy. I like to, I really like taking licorice candy with me in the woods. <clears throat> A lot of these clays hard candies are licorice, either licorice or anise, whorehound. I also really like whorehound. If, if you younger folk ain't never tried whorehound, Go out and see if you can find some uh, whorehound hard candy. You'll you'll thank me. Cocoa, a lot of these cocos and hot chocolates, Swiss Miss, dark chocolate. I don't usually drink hot chocolate or cocoa just by itself. But when I'm out in the woods, what I like to do is I like to brew up some coffee, some real dark coffee, and then put a pack of hot chocolate into my coffee. And it, you get this really fantastic concoction of hot chocolate and coffee got some more flour here this is oat flour whole grain non-gmo oat flour and uh that's bob's red mill brand i just like i really like bob's red mill 
brand things. They, they seem very natural. I like that. Again, this would be a nice substitute if I didn't have any of that uh, Kentucky kernel flour. I could just throw some of this oat flour into a, a pack and uh, do the same types of things with it. I could fry any fish I caught up in it, bread my fish that way. But uh, also I could fry some vegetables. I could even fry my tater, actually. I always try to take a tater with me, a tater or two. And I could bread my taters and fry that up in a pan. Uh, but again, one of my favorite things to do with this is to use it to thicken up, to turn soups into stews. So instead of having this watery soup, I like to put flour in it and thicken that up and so that it becomes a nice stew. It adds calories and adds flavor and it adds body to uh, a soup so that it's not just watery, but it's instead, uh, you know, more stew-like. I don't know if many of you are in the habit of carrying flour with you. Here's some more of that Kentucky Colonel. But there's so many things you can do with it. And it, it doesn't go bad. It lasts forever. You could just mix that with water and make some crackers uh, out of this, out in the woods, or in an end-of-the-world situation, or in a, on a road trip, or anything like that. So I think flour really gets overlooked. You know, I, I always think about the cowboys or the frontiersmen, the type of things that they would carry. They wouldn't be carrying things that would spoil in two days. They, they carried things that would last a long, long time, but offered lots of flexibility. Beans. Let's see. So I got beans in here. You're darn right I do. I got some navy beans right here. Those are probably eight years old. I just ain't gotten to them yet. I've gotten to their brothers and sisters. I just ain't gotten to this particular set of beans yet. But they last forever. Rice, of course. I've got the same thing. I've got rice here. Lasts forever. Uh, there's some more sunflower seeds with the shells. Got a bunch of those, actually. I buy them up and then just keep them in storage. <clears throat> here's some uh, yellow peas. I like yellow peas because they don't take as long to soften as their green cousins do so uh, and they also last forever these are probably six years old five or six years old that is to say but they're they're as fresh as the day i put them in there just ain't got to them yet yeah i got lots of rice um, pasta is good typically what you do is you need milk and all sorts of things to prepare this I can't for the life of me remember what these are called. But this is the little pasta noodles in a cheese sauce that usually ch children eat. Daggum, I can't believe I can't think of that. But anyway, I took it out of the box, put it into this package here, but I included the package of cheese sauce in there. And I think what you typically do is you need butter and you need milk and all that. Well, yeah, if you want to do it exactly right, but if you're in an emergency situation or if you're about back out in the woods, there's plenty you could do with that, che that powdered cheese sauce in there and that dry pasta so it's a nice survival slash into the world you know um you don't necessarily need the milk although i do carry powdered milk with me so there are ways around needing to have you know perfectly fresh milk with you of course i've got some teas in here i've got these peanut butter packets these last for indefinitely almost chocolate some hershey's chocolate bars in here Got them all nicely wrapped up, kept sealed. And nuts. <clears throat> nuts are a nice thing that you can get from the grocery store and then you can throw into a baggie and they also will last forever and ever and ever as long as you keep them sealed. These nuts, I ain't kidding you, are probably five years old. So let's take this cashew and taste it and see if it tastes uh, old or not fresh. Let's, let's see what it tastes like. No, it just tastes like a, just tastes like a cashew. So nuts, nuts last a long, long time. Well, I'll tell you what. That cashew I just ate does lack a little bit of freshness, but it's, it's not so much that it would bother me to eat this whole bag of nuts. I can just tell that it's not, I can just tell that it's got a little bit of age on it, <laughs> but that's it. Oh, daggum. There's so many other things I, I was hoping to tell you about. I buy these little travel underarm deodorants, and I just keep those in stock, too, with, like, my spices and everything. 
because those fit real nice into like my toiletries bag, in my bug out bag, in my, my bag for excursions into the woods, my road trip bag. Uh, these fit real nice, but they run out fast too, so I like to keep them in stock. Uh, this spice right here is one that you'll see all of the uh, quote-unquote bushcrafters, the fake bushcrafters out there using. I say fake because they're not out they're not out anywhere. They're two feet into the woods. And that changes everything. If you're filming something just 20 feet in the woods, it changes everything. When what you're thinking is, okay, I'm, I'm going to be out like 10 miles out in the middle of the woods somewhere. Well, what works for a person 20 feet in the woods is not necessarily what's going to work for you 10 miles back in the woods. You know why? Because you got to carry it. So I, <laughs> these fake bushcrafters really... Put a burr in my britches. Put a hair in my biscuit. But you'll see a lot of them using this old bay uh, for everything. As like an everything spice. <clears throat> I don't like it too much. I'll tell you what I like better. I'll show you. It's this Sazon Preferida brand. La Preferida Sazon. And it's good for everything. You can put that in your soup. You can put that in your stews. Um, I carry it. I'll show you what I carry it in. So, uh, in, a, in addition to carrying your spices, like in a your your kerchief, like I showed you, if you're carrying a cook pot, a lot of times you can fit most of your spices in your cook pot, along with even you know like your fuel canister and stuff like that. So, here's my cook pot slash kettle. This is by Boundless Voyage. It's a 1500 milliliter titanium. And this is my new favorite kettle slash cook pot I love it got a bell handle on it there I'll tell you why I like it because there's no lip here so when you're trying to pour things out of there or scoop things out of there there's no lip that block will block things from coming out and make cleaning the pot real hard um, it's just completely open top and, uh, and I, I like that a lot. So you can see in there, I've got some of my spices in there, including this Sasson I was just telling you about. I like to carry a good amount of it. Let me show you the, my other spices. Remember my those other little spice containers, which I think are one ounce? That one ounce size works for a lot of things, but when you really want to have plenty to season lots of things with or even a pot of stew or something I like to carry a little bit more so that's why I carry a little greater capacity or a little greater quantity of sasson I like it that much and in addition to carrying my sasson in a larger container like that I also carry some sugar in a container like that and I don't usually use sugar in my coffee, I don't usually sweeten my coffee when I'm at home. I don't usually put chocolate in my coffee when I'm at home or milk or anything like that. I I drink my coffee black, truck driver style, you know. But when I get out in the woods or when I'm, I could imagine, in a stressful situation like some emergency or society has collapsed or anything like that or anything stressful, uh, I think about comforts. What kind of extra comforts might be nice in those conditions? So I take sugar with me when I go on excursions into the woods for, you know, days or a week on end, just for that little extra comfort. And yeah, sometimes sitting around a campfire, I, I say, eh, black coffee, while that's fine at home, for some reason, out here around this campfire, I want to spice up my coffee a little bit with maybe some sugar and maybe even some cinnamon. You ever do that? It's good for a lot of things. It's an antibacterial agent. So there's a lot of things in addition to just using as a spice that cinnamon can do for you. In the previous episode of the podcast, I was talking about honey, all the magical attributes of honey. Cinnamon falls into a category like that. It does a lot of amazing things. So if you got room for it, it might be a smart idea to start carrying some cinnamon. It, it could be good for you. There's some salt. We're still looking at my cook pot here. See, that's a, that's a real that's a real amount of salt. You could really do some stuff with that rather than just sprinkle a little tiny bit on a whatever you're eating. 
you could use this amount of salt for actual cooking and other things. I was telling you, and again, in the last, in the previous episode of the podcast, I was telling you that you'd like, you want to have this on hand if you, if you were to get sick out in the woods, because you want to be able to pour plenty of salt into a hot mug of water and gargle that salt water. Well, you can't do that with just a little shaker full, you know, like one of these spice missiles. That's not enough salt to do anything. So you want to carry it in maybe a little bit larger container, the salt. And then, of course, in my cook pot, I've got my boiling cubes come in handy for everything. Again, if, if you're sick, make a nice broth out of that. And just sip that broth, sipping broth. Here's my stove and my full fuel canister. And there you go, folks. I think that's, I think that's the the show. So I hope I hope that you guys have seen some interesting things here and that you enjoy this show. Join us on our exclusive online community over at thepracticalwoodsman.locals, L-O-C-A-L-S dot com, or you can download the locals.com app from the App Store and then just search for the Practical Woodsman within. I do exclusive live streams there on our group on locals on Saturdays. So if you'd like to see the modest things I do there on those live streams, join us and get into some conversations with us about these things. Until next time, you guys take care.